It will now develop this linearized velocity potential equation. So let's consider we have some airfoil and some free stream velocity v infinity. Here's our x, y coordinate system, and this will have some streamlines that look something like this. And we can consider if we have some point p that the velocity here is v with x component u and y component v. So this is a two-dimensional irrotational, irrotational isentropic flow over this body. The key thing we're going to do is say that the velocity is a uniform flow plus a perturbation to that uniform flow. So that means that u is the infinity plus u hat, the perturbation velocity, and v is just v hat. Now these perturbations in general, as we'll begin, are not necessarily small. And they, they, they may be even larger, well, especially say for the x case, there's nothing that says that u hat may not be larger than v infinity in some cases. Now, since the velocity is just the gradient of a potential, we can define a perturbation potential. So we can say that p is vx, uh, sorry, v infinity x, which is our potential for a uniform flow, plus the perturbation potential, where the x derivative of the perturbation potential is u hat, and the y derivative of the perturbation potential is v hat. So that means that dp x is just v infinity plus v v hat v x and dp dy is v v hat v y. And if we look at what happens to the second derivatives, You see that we can write all of these in terms of the perturbation potential as well. Now, if we put these into the velocity potential, potential equation and we multiply the result by the speed of sound squared, we get the following. A squared minus v infinity plus v v hat v x squared times v squared v hat v x squared plus a squared minus v v hat v y squared times v squared v hat v y squared minus 2 v infinity plus d v hat dx times d v hat dy times d squared v hat dx dy. So this is now the perturbation velocity potential equation. This is still nonlinear. We haven't made any simplifying assumptions yet. All we've done is break our velocity potential into a component due to the uniform flow and a component due to everything else. 
Now, if we write this in terms of the perturbation velocities, it looks a little less scary. Zero. Now, if we bring in the energy equation, we can use this to say this is going to be A over gamma minus 1 plus V infinity plus V hat squared plus V hat squared all over 2. Now if we combine these two equations, we get this. 1 minus the free stream Mach number squared times du hat dx plus dv hat dy equals m infinity squared times gamma plus 1 u hat over v infinity plus gamma minus 1 over 2 u hat squared over v infinity squared plus gamma minus 1 over 2 v hat squared over v infinity squared times d u hat squared dx plus m infinity squared times gamma minus 1 u hat over v infinity plus gamma minus 1 over 2 v hat squared over v infinity squared plus gamma minus 1 over 2 u hat squared over v infinity squared d v hat dy Plus, last term, m squared, m infinity squared, times v hat, v infinity, 1 plus u hat over v infinity, times d u hat dy, plus d v hat dx. Now, we still haven't made any simplifications, so this is an exact equation. What I want to note is that the left-hand side of this equation, this term, these two terms, I should say, are linear, because m infinity is a known constant of the flow. Now, we're going to bring in our simplifications, which are equivalent to saying that the perturbations must be small. Basically, this means that we have to have slender bodies at small angles of attack. So, now we're going to say that u hat over v infinity is much smaller than 1. v hat over v infinity is much smaller than 1. And also, that u hat squared over v infinity squared is very small and that v hat squared over v infinity squared is very small. Also, any products of u hat and v hat, v hat with their own derivatives are going to be extremely small as well. Now, if we look at this big equation in light of this small perturbation assumption, what we get is if we look in the range of m infinity being between 0 and 0 0.8, or m infinity being greater than or equal to about 1.2, then what we get is that the absolute value of m infinity squared times gamma plus 1 u hat 
over v infinity plus the rest of that term times d u squared dx is small compared to the absolute value of 1 minus m infinity squared d u squared dx. So we can ignore the first term on the right hand side, this term. Now, for any free stream Mach number below about 5, m infinity squared times gamma minus 1 times u hat over v infinity plus blah blah blah, that term is much much smaller than dvdy. So we can ignore the second term on the right hand side. And the third term on the right hand side can be seen to basically be zero. So what this equation actually then reduces to, subject to this assumption, is simply 1 minus m infinity squared d u hat dx plus d v hat dy equal to zero. And if we rewrite that in terms of the perturbation velocity potential, we get 1 minus m infinity squared d squared by hat d x squared plus d squared by hat d y squared equals zero. Now we have a linear but approximate equation. So this is a dramatic simplification and we're actually going to be able to use this moving forward.